you are tuning into Mad Genius Live, and you better stick around because I've got the queen of meat herself, Angie Marr, here making her famous ribeye steak. Good morning, everybody. My name is Justin Chappell. I'm the culinary director at Food & Wine. I'm the resident Mad Genius, and I'm your host right here on Mad Genius Live every Thursday at 11.30. Um, we are getting ready. We're gearing up for Memorial Day this weekend, and for that, I wanted to celebrate with a little meat. So today we are doing Steak 101, and for steak, I would have none other than the one and only Angie Marr, the queen of meat, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Angie Marr is literally the queen of me. I, she reminded me before we went live that we called her that in print last year. Yeah, you did. <laughs> last year because Angie Marr was a Food & Wine Best New Chef for 2017, um, which is where it's an honor for us to have her in the family. Um, and so that we wouldn't, we want you in the office as much as possible. And <laughs> I so, want to be here as much as possible. <laughs> well, and so when we started talking about doing Steak 101, which is our theme today, um, I said we have to have Angie Marr in to kind of talk about steak basics, what we should cook this weekend. Um, and because we're live, you can ask questions. And Angie could do her best to answer them. So if you have questions about what we're doing today or if you have questions about um, steak or meat in general, she is the one to ask. Um, we got Kelsey Youngman over here. Hi. Um, who has her computer, and she will be able to sh shout out some questions if uh, you have them. So please tune in, use the hashtag Mad Genius Live. Um, I have to say, first of all, so Angie is a 2017 Best New Chef. Um, this week, we announced our 2018 class of Best New yeah. Chef. Um, so amazing. It's, which is such, it's yeah. an incredible class of chefs that um, we're gonna throw a link in the, let's throw a link into yeah. the comments so that people can check out um, all the chefs from across the country. Um, it's an incredible class. There's actually 11 this year. Mm -hmm. um, and so this week we threw a party to celebrate and to announce and Angie was so amazing. She came and actually cooked at the event <laughs> for hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah. What did you make? Uh, we did a 90 day dry age tomahawk ribeye. Oh my gosh, yeah, which you are famous so for. <laughs> and there's Angie and my beautiful red carpet photo <laughs> uh, because it was one of my goals of the night to get a, a shot with Angie on the red carpet. And um, Angie made her tomahawk ribeye, which actually is very, it's kind of similar to the recipe that we ran last year from you, which is her yes. prime rib with, we did sour cherries. You can see the photo here. You can get the recipe at foodmind.com. You can also get it in the comments. Um, you have to talk about this dish really quick because it changes a little seasonally, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what does it look like on the menu now at the Beatrice? Yeah, so on the menu now, we're actually doing it with a cherry and bone marrow bordelais. So Because why not? Because why would we not? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, it's really delicious because it's like cherries, summer, you know, I'm from Seattle. I love a Yakima being cherry. Like, I love it. So for me, it was like, let's get all of the Yakima cherries. Let's make them into Bordelais. Let's put a little bone marrow in it. Because why would we not? Because why would you not? Exactly. Well, can you just explain what Bordelais is? Yeah, so Bordelais is actually um, a traditional Bordelais is a pepper and shallot based sauce with red wine. So it's, a, you know, it's a reduction. And I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. I think it's perfect with red meats. It's fantastic with lamb. Um, we do it a little bit differently, um, where we're actually, you know, adding in the cherries for a bit of a sweeter component. Uh -huh. There's still shallots, there's still black pepper. Um, and then instead of adding butter to finish the sauce, we're actually uh, monteing it with bone marrow. Which is incredible. Right, it's so rich. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so, as I, I, I think I forgot to mention, Angie is the chef and owner at the Beatrice Inn here in New York City, and um, you've owned the restaurant for how many years now? I've owned it for about two years, and we just reopened a year and a half ago. I mean, congratulations. Thank you you have you. transformed that place into a New York City hotspot. I mean, it's you. like almost impossible to get a table there, but <laughs> please try. There's get always a table for you, though. Let's always see. a table for you. So don't call up and pretend to be me trying to get that <laughs> table. Um, it might work, actually. <laughs> it might work. <laughs> um, but definitely, if you happen to be in New York City, tr get a table at the call in advance, get a reservation, get there, get the big the meat, get the crab legs, yes, which are irresistible. And the um, fried chicken. And the fried chicken. At the bar. And all the pink champagne. <laughs> and get all the pink champagne. Um, OK, so let's, we're going back cool. to steak. Let's do steak 101. So steak we have three cuts of meat that we're going to talk about, and we're going to talk about the basics. So Angie's going to go through. and. Um, she, we have a timer here because she needs to flip 
the stick. Here, I'll flip it for you. Do you, you want to go flip the yeah, stick? Yeah, I'll flip okay, the stick. Cool. Why don't you start talking about the first cut of meat, which is ribeye? Right. So I actually have two ribeyes here, and I brought um, one that's been aged for 60 days, uh, and then one that's been unaged, because I wanted to show everybody the difference between these. So I love aged meat, as you know. As um, know. There is no uh, cut of beef in, in the Beatrice Inn that's actually not aged. So um, here's the difference. This is a completely unaged cut. Um, this is the exact same cut as this one, but this has been sitting in a temperature and humidity controlled room for 60 days. So what we're looking at here is you're looking at about a 30% loss of mass. Um, and what happens in the dry aging process is the enzymes in the meat actually start to break down the proteins. Okay. And we're gonna start to lose water weight out of the beef and just gain flavor. And so that's why this one is a little smaller. Exactly. I'm so gonna tilt it up a, so that you can get a sure. close up of it. <laughs> so we're looking at a 30% loss of mass between fresh and a 60 day. But what you see here is, you know, the proteins have broken down, it's lost water weight, and then all we're doing is you've got all of this beautiful fat right here. Yeah. Um, so this is the same amount of fat that's in here, but there's clearly no water in fat, right? Right. So we're retaining all of this and just concentrating flavor. So we're gonna get beefier flavor. It's a little bit almost like, you know, that beautiful blue cheese taste that we Yum. love. Yes. Um, and it's more tender. So that's the other thing, is that when you get aged steaks, we're looking <laughs> at more tender cuts of meat. Awesome. Um, okay, so I think let's, should we get that one yeah, going? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and cook it. Let's get that going and then we'll- Can I have that we'll... little sheet tray over there yeah. so I can season some meat? We've already got a few good questions from viewers. Okay. Um, Skylar wants to know what your favorite cut of steak to grill for Memorial Day is. My favorite cut? Yeah. Oh, obviously a ribeye. Rib yeah, I love a good ribeye. So, um, and if I'm not doing ribeye, I actually love hanger steak. Okay. So this is one of my favorites as well. Thank I think that you, that you yeah, thank you. I still think you get a lot of really beefy mm -hmm. flavor that you're gonna get with uh, ribeye, um, but you know, it's, it's more cost effective, it's a little bit different, and uh, what I actually love about this too is that it, it cooks quicker. Yeah. It actually cooks quicker, but it's, it's really nice. And then Sandy wants to know, can you use your clenched fist to tell the doneness of meat? Um, yes, you can, and I'm actually also <laughs> going to show everybody a trick with cake testers as well, because yes. this is what I use at the restaurant. Um, you know, when I first started to learn how to tempt meat, I did the whole, you know, one finger in the fat of your thumb, medium rare, you know, medium for your middle finger, medium well for your ring finger, pinky finger here, well done. Um, but then I started using a cake tester, and we can actually go over the, the temperatures yeah, with that as because well. Because it's a really, really good. it's a trick of the trade. It's used in restaurants. So Angie's gonna season up her, and no, don't I be alarmed do by salt. the salt. Yeah. I only do okay. salt. I actually don't do any pepper, because I, I personally just don't like the taste of burnt pepper. Um, but you know, we can, you could finish it afterwards with pepper if you want. Can I have the olive right, oil? Yes. Thank you. And don't be alarmed by the amount of salt that Angie put on, because if, 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 it, if you can't tell, this is like a three inch this is a really, really thick steak. It's a really thick steak. A very steak. thick steak. Um, but you know, it's it's a little bit, this is the this is the cut that we actually serve in the restaurant and it's 26 ounces. Okay. Bone in. Bone in. Do you like ounces. using olive oil to cook it? I do, yeah. I start it with olive oil, always. So while this goes, let's talk about hanger steak. Yeah, let's do it. Should we talk about it. hanger? Yeah. Okay, so this is um, hanger steak and there is a, just basically sinew that comes down here. So we actually can't cook it like this. We're gonna have to take the sinew out. So may I? Yes, please. Awesome. And what it, so sinew is basically, it's really chewy and it's It's, it's really chewy, it's inedible, we don't wanna eat it. It's like silver skin, you know? Right. But I think this is what you just showed is, is actually really smart because it's cheaper if you buy the whole hanger like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're at home and you buy the whole piece of hanger, you could very easily, with just a thin knife, take out the sinew yourself. And obviously Angie is a pro and at butchering meat, but it, this is actually really simple to do at home. It's really simple to do, and you know what I actually like about this too, is that if you're at home and you make stocks at home, this is really good to just brown up 
and throw in your stock pot with some bones. It's gonna add flavor, you've got, Smart. you know, yeah, you've got like a little bit of extra meat. And this isn't, you know, I mean, you can see the silver skin here. You know, it's not edible and it's, yeah. you know. So we just wanna take it off, but you've got some extra meat there. So we're gonna put this in a little scrap pile and that is is gonna be fantastic for so your stocks. So let's talk about, so I know you mentioned a little bit. So hanger steak is, I think it's becoming more and more popular. People it are is. starting to cook it more at home. But so what is the flavor difference in something like a hanger steak versus a ribeye? Is there is there a flavor difference? There is. I mean, this this out of, oh, all right. This out of um, any other steak, you're gonna get the beefiness that you would out of a ribeye. Okay. Um, I think hanger and uh, also, to be honest with you, the skirt steak definitely has that like really beautiful beefy uh, flavor as well. And it's more intense like a ribeye. The difference is going to be in the texture really. So, um, you know, I like my meat medium rare. Yeah. I like mine more on the rare side, but hanger actually benefits from cooking it a little bit longer. So if you actually look at this cut here, we can actually see the strips of fat and you know sinew right mm -hmm. going through it. That's what this is. Can I move this over to the stove? You can totally move this over. And actually, can I have one more? And we'll yes. just get the hanger steak started over here. Um, so or what what happens with this cut is that actually instead of cooking it medium rare, I like to cook it medium. Okay. This cut because the heat as as it's cooking when you go to medium, it's going to help all of the tissues break down, and you're going to get a more tender a cut. A more tender cut of meat. Yeah. So when I actually cook this. Um, in the in the restaurant, uh, you know, we won't do black and blue, we won't do rare, it's gotta be medium um, or medium rare, but I prefer medium with this cut. That was your timer for your things. I'm gonna put this here, I want you to get close up oh, of perfect. this gorgeous meat. I mean, look at this. This is really nice. So we're gonna take a pause on getting to skirt steak and I just want Angie to talk to you about her like really cool technique using the cake tester. So there's obviously a couple ways that we can do this. You can feel it and then you can, you know, do this. But what I actually like to do is I like to go in at an angle here, just give it a second, and then we're just gonna touch this to our wrist and it's warm. So here, I'm gonna show you. So if it's hot, you're probably at medium well. But if you, when your body temperature, right? Oh yeah, it's just warm. warm. Yeah. So this is gonna be a medium rare. Okay, great. All right. That's so genius. And it's actually funny because Good, so no? Angie and I actually went to the same culinary school. We did. We did. <laughs> um, and it's one of the things I'm that gonna I learned. I'm going to put this on this resting rack to oh, rest. Yeah, yeah, Is that sure. okay? Yeah. All right, great. Sorry. So one of the things I we actually learned in culinary school was not only, so I have never used this for red meat. So this is like kind of blowing my mind, but we always used it for fish. Yeah. So you would use it to test. You'd put it into the thickest part of a fish fillet. And then if it was warm, yeah. you knew that it was good to go. Here, I'll move this out of the way right. for you. And I'm actually gonna flip this other ribeye. So here's the other thing. When I'm actually cooking meat, you know, there's a, there's a couple philosophies for this. So you either sear it really, really hard on one side, oh. or my philosophy, which is I keep flipping the meat all the time. So every like one to two minutes, I'm gonna flip it. And the reason for that is because one of my biggest pet peeves is meat with like that gray ring around the end. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. only medium rare in the center. So when we flip the meat constantly, we're actually going to get the internal juices basting itself back and forth. So a lot of people will think, oh, you know, your meat is sous vide because yeah. it's the same color all the way through. We actually don't sous vide. We cook everything to order like this, but it's just the technique. And also resting. That's resting is the um, actually, thing. I actually learned that trick um, from another friend of mine and I actually write about it in my new book because it's once you learn to do that and you do this like constant flipping of the meat, mm -hmm. I feel like you're not gonna wanna cook the meat, you know, I, I think you're gonna wanna cook the meat always, you're always gonna wanna cook it always. like that. Yeah. We have a question from someone on Periscope and they wanna know, is it safe and possible to dry age at home? Um, it actually is. I would always recommend that we get a, um, a separate fridge okay. and you can get a temperature and humidity controlled a thermometer in there so you know what, what you're looking for. But realistically, um, you know, I have a separate fridge at my restaurant for dry aging. Um, you know, I'm like writing mm -hmm. my cookbook now, so I'm like testing dry aging at home. Yeah. So that's why I can answer it. <laughs> but, um, but you know, what, uh, what I like to do is it's typically 36 degrees okay. and 50% humidity. That's kind of my sweet spot for dry aging. So stay tuned for her book, which yeah. will have stay a primer. Stay tuned for Angie's book. <laughs> So excited about that. I am too. Um, should we talk about skirt yeah, steak? Yeah, let's talk about skirt okay. steak. So can you cool. get a close up of the skirt steak here just so you could see 
kind of the difference in, because what's so really, what's really neat about it is how thin it is to me, which is obviously, it's obviously gonna be a much easier piece of meat to cook as far as time-wise goes. Right. So much quicker. But, um, so the thing about skirt steak is that it was traditionally um, really categorized as like a butcher's cut, right? Yeah. Because you can only get two of them off of a cow. And, um, you know. As it, she casually, first of all, as she casually bastes <laughs> the meat. <laughs> um, but you can only get two of them off of, of each cow. And, you know, it was a butcher's cut. It was kind yeah. of one of these like throwaway cuts that nobody really wanted. That looks so good, Angie. Oh my <laughs> Are you god. Yet? I'm so I know, I'm it's so <laughs> beefy in here. It's like I like can't even. It's so beefy Should in I here. Can you put this in the oven? Yeah, I'll put that in the awesome, oven. thank you. Um, so and actually let me flip my Yeah. And so the just like the other one, we're gonna flip it after about five minutes. Yeah, we're gonna flip it after five minutes. So we always wanna keep even when we put our steaks in the oven, we wanna continue to flip them. Okay. You know, either way. So this one we're actually not gonna put, this one we're not gonna put in the oven, and then this one we are not gonna put in the oven either. So this is a whole skirt steak, and when we actually get this, the butcher, I mean actually, when I get it at the restaurant, it's got uh, sinew on it, and we basically just peel it off. But if you go to the grocery store or butcher, they're gonna, they're gonna do that right, for you. Right, it'll already be done yeah, for you. Yeah, they're gonna do that for you. But if you do have the sinew on it and you peel it off, it's gonna be the exact same thing as this, where you can peel it off and put it in your stock pot. Right, and I, actually what I like to do when I peel it off is I just take a piece of paper towel, mm -hmm. and then I, because it's a little easier to kind of grab the sinew with paper towel, and then you can like pull it off, much like you would like the back of pork mm -hmm. ribs. Exactly. All right. And so you just cut so it into this. I actually I just prefer to buy it whole like that. I do too. I do too. Um, so this one, I'm actually just gonna switch this out if that's okay. Yeah. So this one's great too, and you know I'm gonna wait a little bit to cook this because this only takes a couple minutes. So we're just we're gonna keep on working on this. So one um, the the ribeye you you cooked it took it sounds it seemed like it took about four four to five minutes on, like flipping it cooking mm -hmm. it on each side, mm -hmm. and then you pop it in them for like ten minutes for medium rare, mm -hmm. approximately obviously depending on the size you're making. So how long would you say this if you were to try to give somebody a ballpark to, of cooking a a hanger steak like this, what would you say? This is about 12 minutes. Okay. This is about 12 minutes, and the thing is is that that's like pan time, not including resting time. Because for me, you know, resting is a part of the, resting our meat is always a part of the cooking process, right? right? So, you know, we need to be able to um, cook it, and then my rule of thumb is half the amount of time that it was being cooked is the time that we rest. Okay, All awesome. Right? Cool. That's a really good trick. Somebody please write that down. Let's put it in. <laughs> Let's write it down. Right? Okay. Somebody needs to write a blog post. What? So Angie Marr says <laughs> your resting time should be about half the time, half the time. of your pan time. Yes. Okay. That half is such, I think that's so smart because people at home oftentimes just like rules like that. They like things that are like general ideas that they yeah. can remember that are easy to, um, you know, pass along. Yeah, absolutely. So this one I'm gonna cook a little bit longer just because we said we're gonna go take it to medium. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing too, while we're talking about resting, tempering our meat. I think tempering our meat, we have to talk about that. Okay, let's do it. So um, when I cook any type of meat, I actually let it come to room temperature. So you know, I let, I let these sit out for like 45 minutes, an hour, just to get it to, get it to room temperature. Because the thing is, is that we're taking all this time to flip it, right, mm -hmm. and to baste it, and to make sure that it's like one color all the way through. Yeah. We're only gonna get that if the interior temperature of the meat before we put it in the pan is the same temperature as the outside of the meat. Right. Right? So it's all gonna cook evenly. That's really an um, important thing to remember um, because you spend so much money on meat, like the last thing you wanna do is yeah. abuse it. Absolutely. And so, um, as you can see, like if you're just tuning in to Mad Genius Live, we have the incredible, the one and only Queen of Meat, Angie Marr, uh, from the Beatrice Inn right here in New York City. Um, she, you, you could get some of her recipes at foodmind.com, but of course you need to make it to a restaurant to eat it. We are doing Steak 101 today to celebrate <laughs> Memorial Day, which is this weekend. Um, we're talking basics, we're talking cooking technique. Um, we've got three cuts of meat, we've got the ribeye, we have the hanger, which is in the pan now, and we have the skirt steak, which she's getting to yes. in just a second. Um, please follow along, Angie is here, she can ask questions, hashtag Mad Genius Live. Um, 
one thing I just wanted to ask, because obviously, if people are watching, we're cooking in a pan, mm -hmm. um, because we're indoors in our test kitchen and we're not outside at a grill. Mm -hmm. But So how could these techniques, um, the how you're cooking, translate to a grill, if somebody would like to do it that yeah, way? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I love outdoor cooking. Like, there's nothing that I love more than open fire. Yeah. And, you know, I wish that we could do it in New York City. Like, yeah. I just wish we could, but we can't. So. Um, when I am uh, cooking on a grill with open fire, I actually like to get my grill really, really hot. Okay. So around 5, 550, and I start by, you know, instead of searing it in a pan, I start by searing it in the hottest part of the grill, and then I'll move it to the top rack of the grill and use that as the oven, and then I'll close the and lid. And then you'll close the lid, okay, exactly. cool. And so if somebody just has like, you know, a good old Weber, would you recommend um, maybe them breaking the coals to I one would, side? Okay. I would, and then going, super hot at first and then moving it to a cooler part of the grill but still with the flipping right always okay. yeah so you're basically just you're using the same technique we're doing here but you're turning your grill into an oven basically exactly okay cool we have a question from Simi who yes. wants to know how do you keep the meat hot while it's resting so I always like to keep it in a warm place but at the end of the day um, you know, if we had to, we could flash it in a pan or on a grill okay. um, or in the oven just to get some surface heat. But the reality of it is, is that meat is going to continue to cook mm -hmm. until it's stone cold. So even as it's sitting right here, it's still going to come up a temperature. So that's why when we cook things like prime rib, for example. I'm going to bring this out just so people can yeah, see as I flipped you. it. Look at Hear this. that sizzle. I just flipped it, but you see it's actually really, really golden, but it's not like overly brown. Can I, can I check it yeah. really quick just to see? Um, but what I was saying with prime rib is that that's why like when we, yeah, it needs more time, I think five more time. minutes. Um, when we uh, take prime rib out of the oven, I'm normally looking for an internal temperature of about 115 degrees because in the 30 minutes that I let prime rib rest, uh -huh. especially like a big seven bone rack, you know, 30 minutes before I cut and serve it, if you take the internal temperature again, you're gonna end up at about 125 degrees within that 30 minutes. Right. So it's still gonna keep cooking. And so the resting isn't just to redistribute the meat, but it's actually a part it's of the part cooking part of the cooking pro process. process yeah. yeah, it's part of the cooking process. Okay, I think we can yeah. get this started because I'm going to pull that off. Yeah, very, you very get shortly. that going. I think it'll be really fun so because this... some people don't realize we're actually a live show. Right. So I think Kelsey <laughs> should do a couple shout-outs of the people oh, yeah. watching. With Let us know who, who's watching. Hi to Nikki in London. Nikki That's in I London. I love London. Let's see. Sanjita, hello. I'm sorry if I'm butchering anyone's names. Paul, Ruxana, Clarence, Belle, Al. Thanks for watching with us. Hi. Yeah, thanks for watching. And please, like I said, Angie's here if you have any questions. Um, I think we should, we should do a poll really quick. So uh, for everyone watching, uh, Angie said her favorite is a ribeye. I think we should ask people out of the three cuts here what their favorite is. Yeah, So absolutely. do you like the ribeye? Do you like the hanger or do you like a skirt? Which Angie has it all going on because she has all the meat <laughs> cooking. All of the meats. And one of the things I want to make sure we do before we wrap today mm -hmm. is you definitely have to walk to the front of the counter and sh they need to get a close up of your shoes. Because <laughs> Angie is literally cooking, no lie, she doesn't do this in the restaurant. I don't do this in the but restaurant. But when she rolls up in the food and wine test kitchen, she rolls up in stilettos. <laughs> yeah, really and nice. A, and an incredible leather jacket. <laughs> okay, we're well, getting I'm some votes. Keep up with, with you, <laughs> otherwise I'd be like that big. We're getting some good votes on meat, but first we have a question from Peter. Uh huh. Do you ever use a reverse sear oven and then grill? I do. Okay. I actually do, and I do it with prime rib. Okay. When I coat the prime rib with something, there's actually a recipe that I do okay. in the summer which is uh, a beautiful prime rib, and we coat it with herbs and uh, a paste of anchovies and olive oil and garlic, just like all of the great things, all right? All the good things. All yeah. of the good things. And um, that is when I do a reverse sear, okay. because I want to cook it super, super slow in the oven, and I start out at a low temperature, yeah. like 275, really, really slow. And then once my meat is at temperature, I raise it up, to about 450, and then that's when we get the nice color on the outside. And so what what that what a reverse sear means is just for anybody watching and you don't know, it means to do the searing at the end, basically. Um, and a lot of times that's like when you go to like an old school diner or something like that, and you get like the, the classic prime rib. That's a lot of times what it is, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Okay, we have overwhelmingly people are Team Angie. They With uh, the ribeye? They like the ribeye. What is it? Yes. The ribeye yeah. wins. See, for me, it's like, you know, ribeye's my favorite because I 
love a good beef bone. Yeah. Like that's like, I, I could actually, my favorite part on, on a ribeye is this right here, which is the spinalis dorsi or the ribeye cap. Okay. Um, and then the beef bone. So that, but that's just me. She loves it so much that, so last year when Angie was <laughs> um, named a best new chef in 2017, she was like, I am throwing the after party this year. And she did, and guess what she served? Beef bones. Beef bones. Like <laughs> literally, we were all at the Beatrice Inn, <laughs> walking around, drinking champagne, and everyone had a, a beef rib in their, in their mouths. And, they their did. and we were just like chomping away, eating that gristle, eating that delicious beefy flavor. Um, because you also get um, really incredible, she gets incredible meat from Pat LaFrida. I do, which is, this is the meat that we have today, uh, which is Pat LaFrida. Actually, both of these are Pat LaFrida. So, um, you know, he obviously, you know, is a very dear friend of mine, but he has the most amazing dry aging room, which you went to I've recently. I've been there, yeah. 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 And so this is what the beef looks like when it goes in. And then, you know, we're talking about like the 30% loss. So, you know, really, like everything that I learned about dry aging, it's like yeah. could be attributed to that. So we, we have like four minutes left. So I, I definitely want to get to the shrimp butter. I don't think we have time to make it. I don't think we do either. But, but we can show the ingredients and talk about it because you already have some here. So I know this is just simple steak 101, but Angie makes this... Um, butter at Beatrice Inn that she tops her beef with, and it's it's a prawn butter, right? Yeah, it's a prawn butter. I'm actually, while you're talking about the prawn butter, I'm gonna just saute these berries really quickly, yeah, do it. and the garlic, and we'll finish the dish. Okay, so, um, well, I think you need to talk about it. Okay. So do you want me to saute the berries? Yeah, do you wanna do it? Yeah. Okay, so just berries, just a quick, uh, quick blister, garlic in there, and then I'm gonna give you some time. Um, so I, you know, the Beatrice is a, is very much a, a steakhouse, right? And it's founded, you know, on the uh, the principles of like that classic New York chop house, which I love. But we do everything a little bit remixed. So um, yes, yeah, there you go. So uh, we do this charred prawn butter, which I really love, and it was kind Look of our it. inspiration for surf and turf. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, it's so good. That is beautiful. <laughs> So we actually char whole prawns um, on the grill till so they're like dark and beautiful, head on, shell on, everything. Um, you know, we do some vanilla beans and then also some smoked butter, uh, which I really, I really love. And um, everything actually goes in the food processor, it gets blitzed up, and then that's what we have right here is, uh, is, a, is a charred prawn butter. So do you put the butter on the steak or do you put it in the skillet? I'm gonna put it on the steak. And actually, would you mind, can I just start yeah. cutting? Yeah. Is there a, a knife? Can I bring this over here? Use? Yeah. You May can. I use this? Yes. Thank you. And then I'm gonna get you a beautiful planner. Perfect. We're gonna move out this one. I bet you this here. So, so it, go ahead. Yeah, so I really, you know, cutting beef is like very, very important to me. So obviously, you know, we have the bone, we love the bone, delicious, right? Um, we want to make sure, I you like to cut my beef maybe like a pinkies, pinkies width, right? Um, and then I, of course, like to go against the grain. And I think most people know that you want to cut the meat against the grain, but do you want to explain why you do that? Yeah, so we actually do it because um, when you cut it with the grain, it's going to become chewy. Okay. Um, so when we cut it against the grain, that is where... I mean, look at how oh, incredible that is. I think is. my mic just fell off. Oh, did it? I think so. Oh, your mic pack <laughs> fell. <laughs> Can I put this in your pocket? Yeah, you could totally okay. put it in my pocket. Just okay. the mic pack, ladies and gentlemen, no need to worry. <laughs> All right, um, can I have a spoon, please? Yes, a big one or... Uh, it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of prawn butter and it's okay steak. that it's, I mean, you probably have it a little bit more at room temperature in the restaurant. Yeah, we have it a little bit more room temperature, but the thing is, is that all of these hot berries and that beef fat oh, that right. we got blistered in are gonna go over it. Could I have oh one more spoon? Oh gosh, yeah. a little one? A big one, please. A big one, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, there you go. thank that's you. a better one. So, as you saw, she has these beautiful blackberries. She has this garlic confit, um, which you make by just cooking it low and slow in oil, right? Mm-hmm. And then the thyme, and I mean, this is, it's, I mean, meat already feels so summery to me, especially like a ribeye steak, but like adding the berries and this garlic and the thyme like really kind of gives it the appearance of summer. 
It does. And you know, when I was uh, when I was younger, I you know, being from Seattle, there are blackberry bushes everywhere. So I would always be picking blackberries, and it's just like it's one of those things. It's just delicious. It's amazing. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of the. That. And, and so then as it kind of sits and it's all sizzly, that butter is just going to melt and get like between the slices. Exactly. I mean, you can see it now. It's yeah, like already starting already to melt. melt. So Let's put it here and let them get a close up. What's the better size? That's it. You there we go. I mean, yeah. look at that. Get a close up of that. A slow roll across <laughs> it because that is the money shot right there. This is incredible. Um, do we have any questions before we go? Well, we have a little shout out from Tristan who said the whiskey aged ribeye at the Bee is the best you've ever had. Oh, Aww. Tristan, I love you. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, oh, a lamb question. A lamb oh, question. Okay. Okay. Percy wants to know how you cook a leg of lamb so it's still red on the inside. Absolutely. Okay, so um, leg of lamb, same principle as prime rib. So I always like a bone in leg of lamb um, just because I think it's really nice to, to be able to hold the bone and slice it, you know, table side. Yeah. Um, but yeah, literally 475 degrees, mm -hmm. 20 minutes, then out of the oven for another 20 minutes. Then back into the oven at 275 for 20 minutes and I keep going in and out of the oven every 20 minutes letting it rest and then back in at a low temperature until it reaches an internal temperature of 115 degrees. And then let it rest, 30 minutes, it's like, the, it's the best. She is an that is an answer. I mean, that, you wanted an answer. Who was that? That was Percy. Percy, Percy you wanted an answer. an answer. I think you got an answer. I hope yeah. somebody wrote that down, but you should. Pro it'll probably also be in your new book. It'll be in the book, yeah. Which will be announced later on. Okay, so Angie, thank you are you the so queen much. of me. I can't for even thank you enough. Me. We are gonna eat this meat. Check out the comments for uh, links to some of Angie's recipes and definitely go to the Beatrice Inn. Yes, all right, thank all you. Right. Okay, let's look at